Gotta make sure my hair looks good. <laughs> I just love a good swoop, guys. I love a good swoop. Oh my gosh. Hello, guys. Hello to all my new subscribers. Wow. I have not uploaded in maybe about like five days. Uh, life has been hectic. It just has been, but all good things. Um, hello, 22,000 of you. Hi, my name is Aisha. Very nice to meet you. Welcome to the A-Team. I cannot believe that I have this many subscribers. I cannot believe it. I can't articulate how I feel. I feel like every time I upload a video, I'm hitting some sort of major milestone. And this channel so far has been beyond my expectations. And I feel like God has really been showing me that he is really blessing me above all of my expectations. He's exceeding all of my expectations and he's really doing things, you know, abundantly. And I'm so grateful for that and I'm so thankful for that. And for you guys, I just wanna say thank you for all of your messages and all of your continuous support. It means so much to me that when I log on to my channel and I see that you guys have nothing but positive things to say, it really does uplift my day. So before we get into this video, I want you to, of course, if you don't know, now you know, follow me on Instagram and that will be right here, of course. And also do not forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have not already, we are 22,000 subscribers deep at this very current moment. And also turn on your post notifications so that you're notified every time that I post. Without further ado, let's just jump right into this video. Okay guys, so today I'm bringing high energy. And as you guys can see from the title, this is called, What Are You Doing, Babe? This video topic actually has been on my heart. And believe it or not, when I do post a video and I'm drafting a video treatment for a video, I really do, you know, ask God, okay, what should I post to help someone? I wanna post something that somebody needs to hear. And that's what also helps me and encourages me and allows me to keep going with, you know, posting videos because I just really want to be able to be like a big sister to you guys or be the best friend, whatever it may be, and encourage you guys. What are you doing, babe? As we know, Valentine's Day had uh, recently passed and it's just, you know, of course we're women. We want love, you know, we want that fairy tale, but I noticed that in the whole culture of Valentine's Day, sometimes a lot of us feel pressure to post certain things or put up with certain things until that date because we wanna look good on Valentine's Day. And on Valentine's Day specifically, I felt like, I felt so blessed abundantly because I have all of you guys on my channel and I am currently single at the moment and I am in love with being single and I'm in love with having my freedom to do whatever it is that I wanna do. And with all the knowledge that I have now, it's so amazing to date from this perspective and to see how I enter into the dating world knowing all of the things that I know. And I just couldn't help but notice, you know, certain things that people would be posting, you know, and, when you're posting something, it's amazing that people that may not know you will look at a post and they'll see this grand gesture or not of, you know, flowers and the card and things of that nature. But what did you sacrifice or did you have to sacrifice to get to that point per se? And this is not for people that are in, you know, exclusive relationships and you guys have that commitment. I'm talking about the girls that don't and you struggle with you know staying with this person because you just want it to look a certain way on social media what are you doing babe is it worth your youth is it worth keeping up this facade when you know that that's not the case the gift he gave you wasn't even that great it wasn't you paid for dinner or he took you to a really cheap place 
whatever it is, what are you doing? First things first, this is like, this video is simply just a rant video because it's something that, as I said in the beginning, has been on my heart. Stop offering to pay for things for these men that are not doing anything for you. Why are you buying their affection? And I think that some people, this is tough for them to hear. It's a hard pill to swallow. And they tell themselves, well, I don't need anyone to pay for me because I'm an independent woman and I don't need a man. Okay, fair enough. I consider myself to be independent as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I need a man. I do desire to be in a healthy relationship. I desire to get married and have kids and the whole thing. I think that that's important to recognize. We abuse the saying of, I don't need a man, and it comes across as differently than we intended it to be. We're not talking about being codependent on a man. We're talking about the fact that if you're moving with all of this masculine energy, you're leading with this masculine energy of, you don't need this person, you don't need that person. But a lot of the times, of course, not all the time, a lot of the times these same women that declare the, this independence, they are behind the scenes of the building men. You know, they're buying men's affection because they feel like, well, I'm going to do it because I don't really need anybody to do it for me. And I want to show him that I'm a boss and that I'm this. You're very capable of showing that you're a boss, showing that you have a lot going for yourself without buying someone's affection. You know, it's just really sad to me. You know, it really stuck out to me, especially on Valentine's Day. I would see certain posts and I know certain situations. And I'm just thinking to myself, this really isn't what it seems. What are you doing? Another situation of what are you doing is he's ignoring your texts, but then you go on Instagram or you go on Facebook and you see that this person is active on social media. Let's not justify the blatant disrespect. Actions speak louder than words. If he is literally ignoring your text message and you see him active on his social media and it bothers you, because I know it does, it should bother anyone, that's a clear indication that he doesn't care. Any person, any man that really does value you and like you as much as they say that they do would not make a move like that. And I'm sure plenty of us have experienced situations where we've seen things like that, you know? Why put up, why tell ourselves that it's different in our head? Oh, he was busy. Oh, he just logged back on really quickly because he had to go tell his cousin something. No, it's inexcusable. It's absolutely inexcusable. If somebody's going to blatantly disrespect you like that, you need to drop them off. If he's taking extended periods of time to respond to your text message and you know because I'm always saying this, ladies, lean into that intuition. What is your intuition telling you? You know he is very much capable of answering his phone. This is a very true statement, babes. We all make time for what we want. We all make time for what we want. If somebody that claims to like you is not doing that, or let's say even you really do like someone and... You just want them to like you back so bad, but they're not really reciprocating that. Well, a lot of the times I get questions saying, Aisha, how do I make this guy like me more? How do I make him, you know, want me more? And in my perspective, I feel like I don't like to push my way onto, to, I don't like to push my way onto men and force them to like me more or do or feel compelled to do things to make them like me more if I don't already have them. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a different energy of you know that they like you a lot and you, you want to use that feminine charm. It's a difference of they're not really caring for you at all. They're not even really entertaining you and you're leading with desperation. 
because you want this so bad. You want this person so bad that you're willing to do anything to get them to see you, to get them to acknowledge you and, and, and like you more. You have to be able to know the difference between that and when to, when you are capable of using your feminine charm and when you're leading with desperation. What are you doing, babe? You cannot lead with desperation. Any valuable person, any man, any manipulating man can sniff that out. She's desperate. I can get her to do this. I can get her to do that. I can make her stay. And I know that she'll forgive me if I do this, if I do that, because she wants me so bad. You don't want to lead with that energy because you will get manipulated. And a lot of the times, yes, we've all been through really sucky situations, but there comes a point in life where we have to take responsibility for our part in certain relationships or in relationships, period. Yes, I myself have been in situations where, you know, things didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to or anticipated. They were all lessons learned. But now that I know better, I do better. I move better. I move wiser. I move smarter. You know, life will teach you the same lesson over and over and over again until you learn. Some individuals like to victimize themselves. They do. And say, I don't understand why this keeps happening to me. The same thing keeps happening to me over and over again. It's clearly because you haven't learned. That's it and accept your responsibility in that. Oh, oh my gosh, I slept with this guy so soon. And I mean, now we're working backwards. It's like, how can I make him like me more now that I already ruined the chances? Is there a chance that maybe you could? Yeah, I'll stop sleeping with him and see how he reacts. Then you can do that. But why can't we just avoid that step first in general so that we're not working backwards, giving our prize possessions to someone, not even knowing where, where we stand, and then asking where do we stand after we already give that up. We have to stop doing that, ladies. There is no excuse for that behavior, especially, you know, after the age of 21, especially. There's just no excuse anymore. You know, another interesting thing is staying away from his home. One of my subscribers, I was laughing because she called it like, something dodging use your imagination and i think that's such an interesting term it's it made me laugh it was very funny it's true staying away from his home especially prematurely i don't think it's wise to put yourself in the red zone of having to go over his house and having to risk things getting steamy in his territory and then you having to reel yourself out of it you're still capable of using that feminine charm, like in my last video, with this given scenarios that I provided, and making him want to be with you without being in his territory, in his home, and then having to wiggle your way out of it, where you have no control. You need to be in control of the situation. And this is why with all of the things that I talk about, it's so important to really genuinely understand the value of yourself and what you have to offer and whether or not you genuinely feel worthy and whether you feel like a quality queen. When you genuinely feel like that, you do tend to move a lot smarter and you do tend to move wiser because you know how much discipline it took you to get to be the woman that you are. And you know that you're not going to accept any, you know, average Joe that just comes your way. Any dusty, you know, musty, disgusted and rusted that just, you know, crawls your way. Keep the creepy crawlers away really that cut and dry I think that that's a huge thing that I want to you know elaborate on that a lot of us are genuinely not taking responsibility for our part in certain relationships and we victimize ourselves and I'm not saying everyone guys okay I'm saying that some of us victimize ourselves and we, and we make it seem like it's always that person's fault. And to be honest, give or take, I'm sure there is a chance where you are being treated unfairly. I don't doubt that. But we have to understand that we have to have boundaries and we have to lay down 
the law and say, I will not accept this behavior any longer. I'm out. Or in the beginning stages, I'm not accepting this period. I'm not even going to begin. You understand what I'm saying? Keep that energy. It is so empowering when you make a move like that. I'm telling you. What do you do in a situation where you're with this guy four months, five months, and you realize, okay, I did wait the three to four month period, but he's still not bringing up any sort of commitment. He doesn't really exhibit any action of wanting to be exclusive. What do I do? This is the thing, guys. There is no giving of anything until there is monogamy, okay? And if he takes longer than that, we have a problem and it's not in Houston. If you've spent exclusively, you know, a couple of months getting to know somebody and they still haven't even wanted to tie you down yet, not, not necessarily marriage, you know, because there are different girls on this channel of different ages, but wanting to be your boyfriend and claim you. We like to be claimed. Don't lie to yourself. What are you doing, babe? What are you doing? You're going to stick around and waste your time. Let me tell you something. Time is something that you will never get back. You can always make money back. You can always make money. You cannot buy time. Do not waste your time. And unfortunately, a lot of the time, you know, only older women understand this and they know that time is precious or maybe even young businesswomen that have successful careers and they know that they have to be very frugal per se with their time because they understand that time is precious and they don't want to waste it. So I'm telling you guys, be very, very selective with your time. You know, you don't want to waste your time on people who aren't simply giving you what you want. And I know a lot of the times we always say, you can get whatever you want. It's possible. I'm telling you, I'm going to be just like those other YouTubers. And I'm going to tell you that whatever you want, you can get it. If you genuinely put in the work for it, you carry yourself to manifest these things around you and to you, whether that is your business idea, your friends, a relationship, whatever it is, if you carry yourself in self-awareness, in love, in light, you will manifest these things around you. Being intentional about the things that you say. Having that positive energy, you will draw these things to yourself. Trust me. We got to stop initiating plans with people that are clearly not thinking about us. Case in point, I'm going to give you a scenario. You hung out with um, Jimmy on Thursday night and you guys he took you out to dinner and then Jimmy doesn't say a word to you until you messaged him it is now Wednesday morning he has not spoken to you in Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday six days it's almost been a week since he has last spoken to you, or let's really be honest, given you any sort of substance conversation. He has not called you at all. The conversation via text has been non-existent, or it's been a high and by what you do in basis. Save me, please. That's not someone that is trying to show interest in you. And you can gauge all of this right before you even you know, you're intimate with somebody. That's the beauty of this whole thing. You know what I mean? If a guy, this guys are very simple, ladies. This is what I'm trying to teach you. They're very simple. It works like this. If I'm not thinking about her, I'm not going to text her. How do you know if a guy is not thinking about you? He doesn't text you. He doesn't hit you up. He's not thinking about you. That's the easiest way to tell. So basically, Jimmy has not thought about you for the last six days. And you know what someone that is not moving like a quality queen would do? But we did hang out on Thursday and we had such a good time. Like, I honestly feel like 
maybe he just forgot because I know he works and he has his own business or he works a lot and he's in school. So I know, Iggy, no, no. We make time for what we want to make time for. Men love to hunt, okay? He just doesn't care. His roster is so, it's probably so extensive or he just simply doesn't really want to be with you really like that and read it exactly as such. I so many times I see women that put up with situations for so long and to the point where the value is forced. It's like, well, of course I'm going to, you know, stay with this person. I've been with this person for five, six, seven, eight years. Of course, I'm, I love this person. I've been with this person for so long. Don't force love like that. What, what, what kind of nonsensical nonsense is that? Then you want to use the years to justify your sad situation because it's the farthest thing from a relationship. And if you define that as a relationship, then you need to reevaluate yourself. Why do you genuinely feel like you deserve less? Why do we not reflect and think about what I'm putting up with is a clear indication of how I feel about myself, what I feel like I deserve. We accept the love we think we deserve. We feel we deserve. That is what we accept. I'm so passionate about this. I'm practically spitting all over the screen. <laughs> you get my point, though. You know, very important stuff. Another thing that I find interesting to mention, because what are you doing, babe, is accepting coffee dates as a first date. Accepting coffee dates as a first date to an 18-year-old may seem, oh, cool, we're going for coffee, yay. But to somebody that's 21 and you want to seriously level up and this is after you've already fell in love at least one time, organically, coffee dates is an indication of someone that's very cheap. Guys, I want to give you an interesting story. This is a true story. I, you know, you guys know the show Millionaire Matchmaker. So there was this one guy that was on Millionaire Matchmaker and I was on, this was one of the times when I had a Tinder a while back and I was wondering why this guy looked so familiar and I couldn't figure it out. And then it just clicked in my head and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the guy from Millionaire Matchmaker. He's on Tinder. Why? Anyways, so we were talking and he basically, I could tell in how he was speaking that I was already disinterested. I mean, the way that he spoke, he came across as very entitled, jockey, douchebag-like, and it was very uninteresting to me. But I was entertaining it because I was bored. And he basically said, let's go, let's, we should meet. And I said, meet for, and he says, a date. Just dry like that, a date. So I said, where? And he goes, bowling. I, I don't even know you. I'm meeting you for the first time and you want to go bowling. I mean, you could easily look at that and think, oh, well, he wants to do something interactive. For me, I prefer something more formal where I'm actually talking to you, getting to know you. I also don't accept movie dates as a first date either, because why would I choose to sit in silence in the dark with someone that I barely know for two hours? Where did we get to know each other at? It doesn't make sense. That's not something you should do, in my opinion, for a first date when you're getting to know someone. So then I said, to be honest, bowling and dinner may sound like a plan, but I really wasn't going to go, really, to be honest. What is that? So he goes, well, we can go bowling, and if everything goes well, then dinner. <laughs> I don't know who he thought he was talking to, but it wasn't me, unmatch. I, I don't have time for it. You understand what I'm saying? And, and that's another thing I wanna to touch on. This is a rant, of course. It, just because someone has money, and you know they have money, legitimately. I mean, he was also an attorney. Attorneys love me, clearly. It doesn't mean that they're going to be generous. There's a difference between just having money and being generous. And I also knew clearly that he was very cheap because he told me that he was going on vacation to Vegas and I've been to Vegas a ton of times with my family. So I said, oh, well, you should check out the Wynn Hotel at the Encore Hotel. They're basically the same hotel and it's my favorite out there. It's the only place that I stay when I'm there. And he said, oh, I usually stay in the middle of the strip or like around the strip. And I'm like, 
you're a millionaire and you're staying where? So I said, oh, okay. And he goes, yeah, I don't see why I would spend $300 a night on a hotel when I get tons of other like hotel rooms comped for me. And I'm like, okay, cheapo. I literally said to him, no offense, you sound extremely cheap, like unmatched, like best of luck to you. I, I just don't have the time. He doesn't even want to spend money on himself. He's definitely not going to spend money with me. Also, he's someone that clearly has investment issues. He doesn't like to commit at all. He's a commitment phobe. He wants to put a down payment on me, which was AKA the bowling. And then if things go great, if I'm so lucky, he'll do me the honor of taking me out to dinner. And God knows where that dinner might even be. I mean, for Christ's sake, it could be Red Lobster or Cat's Deli. I don't know, you know? Why even bother taking the risk? So a lot of the times we see red flags and we just ignore them. Don't ignore the red flags. Coffee dates is a clear indication that somebody is cheap. You should not be meeting someone for the first time over coffee. We are not college students getting ready to do a group project. What is that? Stop. Going for drinks is like an audition. It's like, oh, let's see how loose, you know, she can get maybe, or maybe it's an indication that he's also, you know, very nervous. But me being a non-drinker, I, that kind of gets taken off the table for me going for drinks because it's, I, I don't drink. But drinks are also known basically as like an audition for a date. But Formally, I just like to simply go to dinner. I mean, dating for men is expensive, period. If you can't commit to doing things the right way, then you're not my type of person. Are you ladies picking up what I'm laying down? If somebody, you can clearly tell how somebody is by what they're ordering, what they choose to recommend for you. If you're reading a menu and you're like, hmm, I'm thinking of getting the, you know, I'm just throwing this out there, the lobster bisque, and let's say the lobster bisque is $15 and um, or the filet mignon. People, a lot of people eat that. I've only had steak once in my life, so I don't even really know. And the filet mignon, let's say the filet mignon is like $30. He says to you, oh, I think you should get the lobster. All right, well then you just got your answer. You clearly know that he chose the cheaper item. The right thing for him to have said was get whatever you want, honestly. Whatever sounds good to you, babe. Whatever you wanna get. Hello, ding dong, that's the right answer. My case in point is, guys, as this video comes to a close, what are you doing? What are you doing to show that you're a quality queen? What are you doing to prevent your past mistakes from entering into your new relationships or your new dating experiences? What are you doing? Stop putting up with nonsensical nonsense. It's inappropriate. This is 2019. There's too many resources and information out there for us to be falling for the same old tricks and games. Enough. And I know it's coming across like I'm being so reprimanding, but it's just my genuine passion. And I genuinely don't want you ladies to fall for the same old, you know, bag of tricks over and over again. I want you guys to be happy and be the best version of yourselves and to fall in love if that's something that you desire and get married if that's something that you desire. I just all, I want us all to be able to grow together and inspire one another and uplift one another. That's genuinely what I want from the bottom of my heart. And a lot of the times I do see comments and people are like, oh, oh my gosh, I just feel like I got spanked or something. And I'm just like, do I really come across as that mean? I promise, I'm really not. It's just my passion and the points that I have. And I just am like, no, I don't want you to, I don't want you to fall for these same old type of, you know, misleading mistakes. And I want you ladies to learn, but just know that I genuinely am here for all of you. I genuinely do care from the bottom of my heart. And I genuinely do appreciate all of you lovely ladies support and guys, cause I know I do have a couple of guy subscribers. 
<laughs> and with that being said, this is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for all of your continuous support. Thank you so much for 22,000 subscribers, guys. My birthday is actually April 21st. So for all the people that keep asking me, I am an Aries and a Taurus, I believe. And it would be amazing if I could hit even... If I could hit anywhere from 50 to 75K by my birthday, I would be, again, speechless like I am right now. I would just be floored, absolutely. I just hope that you guys had an amazing day. I hope that this video finds you well. I know that it is a little bit different maybe in the style. It's not a focused topic that much other than the actual title but I just really felt this on my heart and I really wanted to get this across to you ladies. So hopefully you guys all receive this in love and I love you guys so, so much. God loves you. Of course I love you. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah.